What's up everybody, YouTube land? This is Lee coming to you once again from the beautiful Guitar Wizard facility. That's right, in downtown beautiful Lincoln, North Carolina. And uh, today we got Roger with us. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> We're still open. People are uh, walking around playing guitars. We got some lessons going on. A lot of cool things happening here at the shop. And uh, a lot of cool things happening in the future. We're going to tell you about later. But uh, today what we wanted to do was uh, shed some light on something that uh, we've been asked quite a bit and actually something that happens quite a bit. Um, we, oh, go to, yeah. Yeah, we go to guitar shops a lot, uh, pawn, pawn shops, shops. Mm. absolutely. This actually came in and we wanted to highlight the difference between a real Gibson Les Paul and a fake. 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 <laughs> Gibson Les Paul. And so uh, what we got, we've got two guitars here and both of these are Gibson Les Pauls. One is a no, real, they're not. One is a real one, and one is a fake. fake. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to go over some of the high points. And uh, we actually, before we started this uh, this tape today, we had some people in the shop, and we were asking them, you know, can you point out the fake? And people couldn't do it. Ah, uh, I'm almost say probably three out of five chose the fake as the real Gibson Les Paul. It's crazy. Uh, so we're just going to go through a few things here. Uh, there's going to be some some close-ups uh, on the video here of what we're pointing at, but um, yeah, just to start things out. Uh, let's go for the obvious things. Obvious say, things, okay? absolutely. The first thing that I notice when I'm looking at a fake Les Paul are the bridge pins. Every fake I've ever seen, unless somebody's went in and done a modification on it, this has a straight screw on mm -hmm. it. Ninety percent of Les Pauls will always have a polished end. Right. A few have an Allen on them. Right. But just a few of them. That's the first thing. What do you yeah. see the second thing? Yeah, so the bridge pins and this, uh, we pointed this one, so this is gonna be our fake. Fake, 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 fake. So next is, one thing that I always like to point out is actually on the back of the headstock, but it's where the serial number is on the back of the headstock. The first one we're going to show is the fake one. The fake one, absolutely. And the second one's the non-fake. Right, the the fake one, it looks like it's etched in. Yeah, the fake almost looks like it's been stamped by a heavy machine stamp. Right. Instead of, uh, you know, a person coming with die stamps and hammering them in. Yeah, yeah. you can actually run your finger along the back of the, uh, the headstock up there and tell the difference between the, uh, the hard stamp of the fake, 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 and the hand pressed <laughs> stamp of the real Les Paul. So that's that's what I always look at first. Um, give me something else that you always look at. Next thing, and you have to kind of have another Les Paul to compare it, unless you're just uh, used to looking at it. Notice the position where the knobs are at. It's always a bigger square. And that's something that's not easily changed back. If somebody takes one of these, you can change these pins over and you might sure. can slide it by somebody. Yeah. But you can't change how close these knobs are compared to how far away these knobs are. And that bottom of volume control for the rear pickup, look how it falls on the fake. It's almost in line with the back of the tailpiece. Over here, it's almost in line with the bridge. It's farther towards the bridge. Yeah. That's a telltale sign also. Yeah. Also, the tailpiece. Ah is the way it's drilled on this versus this is just a, just a, a straight hole. This is drilled where you can you can string it up backwards and wrap it over the tailpiece mm -hmm. and the balls will fall in from your strings all the way in. Or you can put it this way and it still stays smooth. This way it's smooth because it's recessed in with the balls. This side here is not big enough to ball. So if you string it backwards, you'd be able to see the balls. They would be sticking out. That's right. That's right. And uh, one of the coolest ways to tell a real one from a fake one is with a black light. Now we're going to try to show you this on camera, but if you take a black light and shine it here, you're going to get some some fairly shiny, a little bit of reflection, um, yeah. mother of pearl in there, uh, and as well with the Gibson logo up here. Now, when you do it over here on the fake, 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 it is one of the most obvious things I've ever seen. You actually see. The decal in there. Yeah, you can actually see the outcut of the decal around where it says Gibson. And you'll see that on the video here. Mm -hmm. But also, the inlays look like they're neon. Absolutely. They'll glow up because the kind of plastic they're made out of. Absolutely. And also, another thing is... Fred so, Nibs. Fred yeah. Nibs, Nibs, yeah. Nibs. <laughs> Woo! Fred, oh, no, no. Oh. Fred Nibs. <laughs> Bet oh. on this one. On this one. <laughs> It's hot in here. I don't, what, it's Where's Tarina? Oh, 
On the real uh, Les Paul, the fret nibs always come up over the ends of the fret. Most of the time. On some of the 2014s and a few others scattered around there, Gibson got a little lax, a little lazy on mm -hmm. it, and they did it like a fake, fake, fake. Or if you have a Les Paul, somebody's refretted. A lot of times you'll see them, right. they'll shave that nib off of there and put the fret on top like the fake. If you look at the fake, you'll actually see there's no nib. The fret's laying over the top of right. the binding. Right. And there are other few things. Uh, thickness of the body. Um, also look at the look at the, the tuning keys here. Check that out. Totally different color. Yep. You That's almost a green. And, and they're slightly smaller. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing you can always look at, if it's a Chinese or South Korean guitar, because we sell a lot of guitars that have their parts come from other places, right. I've noticed if it's not a United States tuner, it always has that greenish tint to it. And it's not saying the guitar is completely made in Korea or completely made in China, but I'll be willing to bet you those are Chinese tuners. Yep. And if you check this out right here, the screws on top here mm -hmm. versus the screws on the bottom here. Epiphone, 90% of times, always put their screws right there. Now, somebody can flip that around. Right. But most of the time, they miss that also. Me and my wife were in a pawn shop one day, and a guy came in and said, I got this Les Paul. You got to take a look at it. You're going to love this thing. <laughs> and she and they walk it out, and it's in a Gibson case. And before they open it, she says, well, the case is fake. <laughs> 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 this is an attorney. And she goes, the case is fake. And they, all these men stand in the pawn shop looking at her and says, <laughs> No, no, it's a real. She says, no, you can tell it's in the wrong location and it's blurred around the edges. It's screen printed. It's not the way that Gibson does theirs out of Canada. And they opened up. As soon as they opened up, she goes, fake, 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 fake. Because of the pen. She looked down and they were like, how do you know that, honey? Yeah, so, so we're going into a lot of detail with the differences here. But if you've got something that you're not sure about, look for a few of the telltale signs like we talked about the uh, bridge pins or the, uh, the tailpiece, or uh, you know, where the volume and tone knobs are. Some of the telltale signs, some of the spacing with the Les Paul. Look where the Les Paul uh, signature is here compared with where it is up there. Mm -hmm. It's much uh, further forward. And usually on the thrust rod cover, on the fakes, somebody has apparently changed this one to a real Gibson uh, Crush rod cover because this one just says standard. Almost every fake I've ever seen says Les Paul standard. Yeah. So this one it looks like somebody. And the, the thing you can always keep in mind, guys come in here and they'll buy a fake Chinese copy or a fake made somewhere else. And if you want to make it look like a, a real Les Paul, you pretty much want to have the same amount of money at the time you put all the pickups in it and you, and you go in there and put the right bridge on it, the right tailpiece in it, mm -hmm. and you're still not going to have the holes right in the body here. But the big thing about it, you've just buried yourself in a guitar that's not worth two or three hundred dollars right. max, and you've got fifteen hundred dollars in parts. You can buy a nice used real Les Paul for that, you know? Yep. And and the big thing too, a lot of people miss this, is the angle of the headstock. Right. The headstock is going to be more drastic angle on a real Gibson. It's going to be more like an Epiphone. And the other thing, the headstock, you know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. The width of the headstock, well, on the uh, the fake, it's one piece of wood. Mm -hmm. On the real one, it's, uh, it's wings have been added. Been added, exactly. And uh, also something, I don't know if we mentioned, was the tuning pegs. The tuning pegs, yeah. 99% uh, of the time, the real Les Paul is going to have nuts holding the tuning pegs in, even if it has screws on the back. Mm -hmm. And on the fake, it's just an insert. Right. You know, like an Epiphone. Basically, what these guitars are are Epiphones that's been run at a different shift or in a different right. plant, but it's originally the specs of an Epiphone. You know, it's just that looking at it at a glance mm -hmm. and saying, that's a fake. You know, one of the most common things I hear our customers say, well, I don't care if it's fake because I'm going to beat it up on stage anyway. Mm. You know, deep down inside, I think they do care. Yeah. They do care. It's a quick fix for something that sometimes you may have to save a little money to get. Exactly. It's exactly. And nothing's worse than me playing a, a fake guitar and somebody says when you come off stage, say, man, you sounded good. That Gibson's bad. And in your heart, you know it's not real. Well, and you have to you have to make a dis conscious decision. Do I lie mm -hmm. or tell them I won't buy the real thing? That, that or you come off stage yeah. and someone talks about how great you're playing. Man, that's that's great playing, but that's a fake Gibson. Yeah. And somebody oh, yeah. calls you out on it. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen that, didn't we? <laughs> but we just don't want our customers to be taken advantage of. Whether you buy a guitar, guitar wishes or not, 
we want you to be happy and continue being a musician that's striving, yeah. not somebody gets discouraged and stops. Yeah. And one more thing I want to point out on these that we've not hit yet is the nut. Uh, this is bone. Mm -hmm. Always will be. And that is plastic. One of the ways you can tell it, there's a couple ways you can tell if you really want sensitive, you can actually take a little bit of solder and iron and put it on this one. Mm -hmm. And when you hit this, it smells like plastic burning. <laughs> if you barely hit it on the edge, just with a pinpoint on it, it smells like you're at the dentist office. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's sharp too. Yeah. And you know, bone's not perfect, even though it's been machined. If you rub your finger across the edge, man, that's just slick as glass on this side here. It almost feels like the edge of your tooth. It it's does. just a little bit of, a little bit of step in there. Yeah. The next thing we want to talk about is when we remove the truss rod covers. Mm -hmm. Now this is taking the guitar apart right. to find that it's a fake, 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 but it's a telltale sign. I've only seen one fake that somebody went through the time to change the truss rod cover and they put an acorn nut like a Gibson uses, Right. always uses. In the truss rod. Yeah, and that one. This is going to have an Allen, oh. and it's going to be metric. That's yeah. that's a telltale sign, like an Epiphone. Yeah, that's that's one of the things. The next thing is we're going to pull the covers off the back, and when you see the volume pots, a lot of times this one has been changed out. But what you're going to see on this is still 500 hertz pots, the bigger pots, but they're not stamped Gibson at all. None of the wires coming from the pickups going to the pots have the metal mesh on them. The Gibson will always have that metal mesh on right. it. And the pots itself will be stamped Gibson. Right. And that's a good example when you're looking at that. You can always tell that. There's nothing wrong if a man can't afford one of these other than the federal government says you can't because it's a fake. fake, fake. Yep, it but, is against the law. That's something is. we do need to point out. That the, the sites, uh, the, the Chinese and the Korean sites that sell these, uh, Gibson is going after those. They are. Yeah, and we spoke with Mark at NAM last year, and he said they were going after those as fast as they pop up. And they are. Anybody is going into uh, their originality. They're trying to steal their originality, Gibson. And, you know, I think in a lot of cases, the things in the United States has been taken advantage of because we hadn't been strict enough on our hard work that we've put forth. You always hear how other countries have done a great job designing things, but we've done a great job designing things. Yeah, we have. We should be proud, but we should protect what we've designed just like they protect what they design. Yeah, it's they've fair got, play. And they've got every right to go after that, and so we support that. Mm -hmm. And it hurts my feelings when you have customer come in and we're making them a very, very fair price, and usually under the market price on something, and right. they call you a few days later, man, I got a great buy on uh, eBay. Yeah. And they come in and bring it, and I, don't have, I had a friend that happened to, mm -hmm. you know. And it was. It's happening a lot more these days. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's not just in the Gibsons. We see it in the Fenders too. Oh, the yeah. Fenders are a little easier to spot. Yeah, I saw a, a, even a Taylor Acoustic. I called oh, you yeah, about one day. Yeah, we had a Taylor yeah. Acoustic show up. Sure it was did. a fake. So, and you know, it's the same way with the Hummingbirds. Same way we see it with the, the Martins are fake. The Taylors are yep. fake. Now, anything that's popular is going to be faked. Oh, yeah. And there is a difference. There really is. There's really a difference. I mean, go drive a kit car that looks like a Ferrari, then go drive a real Ferrari, and you'll notice there's going to be a difference. I don't care how big the V8 is they put in their Fiero, you know? <laughs> I promise you, it don't feel like a Ferrari. Right. And a real Gibson feels like a real Gibson. Yeah. A real Fender feels like a real Fender. Yeah. Fake, to get it to that point, you could have bought the real thing and have something that's going to continue climbing in value with age as an investment. Yeah. That fake's never going to be an investment. Yeah. And if you have anything out there that you are just not sure about and none of this has cleared anything up for you, take some pictures, send them to us here, or give us a call, and we'll be happy to help you out with anything that you've got that you're not sure if it's real or fake. I hope what we're doing is helping people, but one of the things we want to do now, we're going to put these guitars in Hayden's hand, and let's end this video with a comparison of what the sounds sound like. We'll start off with the real Gibson. All right. Then we're going to go back to the fake. Then we're going to end up with the real Gibson again. And you'll understand why you want a real Gibson. All right, let's do it. Let's do it.
cruising for a bruising. <laughs>